Hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Brown from the Beyond Clean team, and I'd like to thank you for joining us in the second of an 11 part collaborative webinar series <laughs> between Beyond Clean and Census Technologies. The Census team embraces the team experience, and they do this by understanding that providing for the sterile processing community happens through nurturing the individuals like yourselves. And that's exactly why they've launched the Census Continuing Education Series, True Grit, True You. Uh, if you haven't joined us for a Beyond Clean virtual event before, I'd like to call your attention to a couple of features. On your screen, you'll find a list of downloadable resources. You'll find a question and answer box where you can submit questions for the speakers throughout the presentation. And if you'll notice on the bottom row of icons, there's a CE icon on the far right. Clicking on that icon will bring up a survey that you will need to submit prior to getting your CE certificate. So after the presentation, fill out that survey and you'll be all set. Uh, one thing that I definitely want to call attention to is that loaner instrumentation, uh, the topic of this event, is one of the most challenging aspects of sterile processing. The instruments keep getting more complicated, they arrive in huge batches, and they often arrive without enough time for reprocessing. All of this makes it hard to ensure patient safety and proper reprocessing. During this webinar, we're going to consider some of the common challenges that come with loaner instrumentation, as well as how a modern tracking system can help ensure that loaners are processed properly uh, and only safe sterile instrumentation is used. I'm really excited and honored to now turn it over to your presenters, Susie Martin and Jason Blake. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining. <clears throat> Just a tad bit about myself. I've been a project manager with Census for the last five years in various capacities and have spent time on site at different facilities and talked through some of their challenges with loaner management. So I'm really excited to talk about this with you today. And I will let Jason a little bit about himself and then we will get started. Good afternoon or morning, wherever you may be today. My name is Jason Blake. I've been, I'm an implementation manager with uh, Census. I've been with the company a little over uh, five and a half years. And uh, I've worked both in training on site and getting projects set up for implementation. Um, worked with uh, over a hundred facilities in various different aspects of the projects. And I look forward to working with you today. <clears throat> Thank you, Jason. So we will go ahead and get started. Loaner management, getting the most out of a loaner management system. Some of the things that we're gonna go over today, the objectives are understanding the pain points a hospital may experience when you don't have that loaner management system in place. How a loaner management system would benefit with efficiency and traceability and some possible solutions for loaner management. So now before we get started into the actual presentation, there is a question here that we would like for you all to answer, if you would, please. Uh, it should be showing up on your screen and I just need you to look at this, click on the answer that you want to submit and then click on the submit button. And I'll give you about 20 seconds to go ahead and do this and then we will Look at the results. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and see where we are. Okay, it looks like we have some that have a strong loaner management system in place and are not having any issues. That's really good to see. And we have some that have a software, but you're not using it to the best of its abilities. Well, hopefully this presentation will help you see some of the ways that we can help you with that, talking through this, some of the questions that may pop up. And then I see that there are some that have no process or system in place at all, and managing everything by hand. So this is quite a, quite a breadth of 
different uses or non-uses of a lunar management system. So let's get in and start talking about this, the pain points, how a lunar management system would benefit, and then possible solutions. So as we get going, what is a lunar management system? A lunar management system is a way to provide visibility to not only the hospital, but to the vendors. So everyone can see when cases are scheduled, when trays need to be picked up, when they need to be delivered, and where they are in the facility. There's three challenges without a loaner management system that can be made much easier with a loaner management system, and those are scheduling, the communication, and verifying or confirming that the trays have arrived at your facility and that they are in your SPD area. Hospitals that don't have a loaner management system, there are so many things that you're scrambling for. You know, a case is scheduled. How do you know if it needs loaners? How do you know who the vendor rep is? How do you contact that vendor? Is it phone calls? Is it emails? Is there back and forth about that? Does the rep just show up with the trays? When they show up, do you know what case it's for? Is there a process at all? You know, write it down on a piece of paper. You know, maybe it's for, you know, Dr. Martin's total knee. How do you know exactly all of that? Um, does your OR staff and your SPD staff meet daily to go over the schedule to make sure you have everything you need? I wanted to introduce some characters that we're going to be referring to in this presentation. We're going to have Grace, OR coordinator. We're going to have Jason, SPD manager. And we're going to have Susie Loner. So I'm going to ask Jason, SPD manager, to talk just for a few minutes about some of the hurdles and challenges that has been experienced. So one of the things that we run into so often in the SPD world is uh, that we don't know when loaners are going to be coming in. So we have, uh, it's 10 o'clock at night, we're working to get trays finished up from the day and move, you know, get them ready for the next day's surgeries, and then all of a sudden, boom, here comes a, a vendor or a delivery rep who's dropping off 30 trays for 7 o'clock in the morning. And we didn't know they were coming. We weren't even aware that, you know, a case was scheduled that would need these. Uh, so now we're scrambling to try to get 30 loaners processed, washed, and clean and ready for a 7 o'clock case in the morning. We have a, you know, standard that they're supposed to bring them in at least uh, 24 to 48 hours before a case so we can have enough time to get them uh, scheduled. Uh, but they, you know, this happens so often they just drop them off. So, you know... And then we come to find out that that case was scheduled like five days ago and somebody could have given us some heads up at least a little bit earlier uh, to know that the case was even coming and to expect the loaners. So, you know, we, we, only, we have limited staff or we're short staffed or, you know, we, we've had a busy day that day trying to get them done. Now we have to cram 30 more loaners in to be washed and sterilized and cooled and ready for the morning. Um, you know, the vendor was dropping them off and we asked them, hey, you know, why didn't you drop these off sooner? How come, you know, you know, we could have got these done a lot quicker or with less stress, I would say. And the vendor goes, well, they just told me this afternoon and let me know that the case was on for tomorrow. And I had to get them over here as soon as I could. So this is if this sounds familiar. You're not alone. Um, we've had many people that we've spoken to. Um, that's where the the interactions come from is just what we've learned uh, that it, it can be so frustrating. You have enough, you know, trays that you have to process and you're ready. And all of a sudden now you have these loaners uh, to be done. So uh, with a loaner management system, if you had something in place that could let you know, uh, you know, a couple of days in advance, if that case was scheduled at five days ago, maybe they could have given you, you know, that day you could have found out that it was scheduled, maybe a couple of days after that, 
long before the night before the surgery is supposed to be done. That way you can be prepared, you can have it done, less stress on your staff, and be able to have that visibility and especially communication, which is always detrimental and important when it comes to dealing with uh, surgery as everyone in the audience knows today. So as we can see from this or hear from this, when, when you don't have the visibility or the traceability to know what is happening and when it's happening, there's so many different resources affected by that. Your SPD staff, your OR staff, maybe materials management. Um, in this situation, you know, if something's delivered late at night, obviously you're not fully staffed. The manager may not be there. So does, you know, Susie Tech contact Jason, SPD manager? What, what do I need to do? I need someone in here to help me. So not knowing just puts a really big burden on, on all of the resources there at the site. So let's now take a look at <clears throat> some of the aspects of a loaner management system and the challenges that you have with those and how a loaner management system would help. There are three things that we're gonna talk about in here. One of them is scheduling, one of them is communication, <clears throat> and one of them is verifying that your, that your trays have been brought in and they have been sterilized. So without a loaner management system, as we talked just a little bit ago, how much time is spent looking for trays, wondering if the trays have been dropped off? Have they even been ordered? Who did the ordering? <clears throat> Grace, OR coordinator, did you order the trays for this? When did the vendor say they were gonna be here? You know, Jason SPD is looking to Susie Loner, calling Susie Loner. I thought you were going to have your trays here by such and such a time. There's a lot of, I, I don't even know what the right word is for that. I'm sorry. But, you know, it's, it's not a smooth transition. It's not a smooth scheduling or tracking available to know where everything is. Cases are, are canceled, so you have trays standing, standing there. Or a late ad was brought in. You didn't know it. You weren't made aware of it because the scheduling wasn't done. So those are some you know, pretty critical things that you need to be aware of. You don't want to have to track down and contact the vendors. You don't want to have to have the OR staff calling down to SBD, where are our trays? Well, you're trying to figure out which ones go to that case. And one note that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I did want to bring up in here, you know, surgical cases may have to be delayed or canceled if trays aren't there on time. Um, in my experience, I have had some where that did happen. They did have to reschedule a case because the loaner trays did not arrive. And I want to bring this up that one minute of lost OR time is conservatively valued at $150 a minute. So how much is that costing when that happens? Another piece of it, again, <clears throat> is the communication. The OR staff doesn't know if the trays have been delivered. The vendors have delivered the trays to the hospital, but they may not know exactly what cases they're for, or they may know it's for Dr. Martin's total knee, but the procedure it's actually scheduled for isn't called that. It's called something different. So there's communication there of which cases this truly for. Um, knowing if the trays have, been, have arrived. How do we know that the trays are here? And then for the vendors, how do they know when to pick up their trays? The communication piece is so big, starting with the scheduling of the case, knowing loaners are required, knowing what vendor to reach out to, knowing how to order the trays, what's the communication back that the trays have been ordered, that the trays have been delivered, and that they're ready for pickup. What is that communication loop like? Without a loaner management system, it's pretty cumbersome. And when it is time to pick up the trays, the vendor doesn't know. So then your facility becomes a storage unit for vendor trays because the vendors aren't picking them up. This slide here is just, a, it's a little busy, but it's 
kind of like my perception and from what I have heard from sites that I have talked to of kind of how it can be when you're when your facility doesn't have a loaner management solution in place. The scheduling, okay, you know, we know that there's a procedure to be done, the case is, ske is scheduled. <clears throat> how are we going to know it requires loaners? Who do we know who to talk to to get those loaners brought in? Is it via phone? Is it via email? Do we have text messages going back and forth? And then how is that communicated to sterile processing? <clears throat> And then some things we might hear in sterile processing is, what are these trays for? Susie Loner came in, she dropped these off and left. So what are these trays for? <clears throat> or we have case 1342 coming up. This is, this is Dr. Martin's total knee. Where are those trays? And then when is Susie Loner gonna pick up her trays? The communication is such a big piece of the loaner management system because there are so many resources involved and so many moving parts that you don't have control over. And when you don't have control over it, it's hard to track it. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about the value of loaner management. Loaner management can be automated. It can automate those orders based from your EMR, from your OR scheduler. It helps manage communication between the vendor and the facility regarding cases. A loaner management solution would show you a schedule of the cases that are coming up that require loaners. It would provide an at a glance visibility of everything that's coming up, your cases, the surgeon, where the procedure is taking place, who is the vendor rep that's been assigned to it, and know what trays are coming in because you would be able to see them. It helps enforce vendor compliance with check-in and check-out of your SPD area. It also helps establish vendor ratings. If you have a vendor who's notoriously late for delivering their trays, the system would help you know that. If you have conversations back and forth, well, Susie Loner, you, you know, why do you have so much trouble getting your trays here on time? Well, the conversations back and forth are good and you can, you know, work with her on that. But if you have documentation showing that the trays are notoriously late, that gives you a little bit more leverage when it comes time to do any coaching with that particular vendor. It helps when you aren't able to see what is coming up for the next week for appropriate staffing. Maybe you have a heavy day of loaners, like Jason was saying, somebody dropped off 40 trays. Well, if you know that ahead of time, you're able to staff a little bit better and be able to handle not only those 40 loaner trays that came in, but also the rest of your normal processing of trays that are at your facility. <clears throat> the communication between the vendors and the hospital can be automated, which is a really nice feature, I think, of a loaner management system in that it's not left to the OR coordinator or SPD to reach out and call the vendor and or email back and forth. The system will email that vendor initially when there is a new case that comes up that they're assigned to. And some of the loaner management systems will um, integrate with a tracking system if you have an instrument tracking system, sometimes those will integrate together. But loaner management can also be just a standalone solution. It doesn't necessarily have to integrate with anything, but it still can automate the process for notification <clears throat> and knowing what is going on. So what if there was a tool <clears throat> that did show you all of this information in one place? It showed you your upcoming trays to process, your deliveries that are at risk, your trays that are late in being picked up. <clears throat> look at this, if you look at this, this uh, first one, upcoming trays to process, it shows you seven days out. And you can see that there is one day that has 
a lot more trays coming in than the rest. If you know that ahead of time, you may see that you've got staff on PTO or for whatever reason, you may not have enough staff on hand to process all of this in a timely manner. With this, you're able to see that and be able to um, manage your resources accordingly. It also shows you a color-coded view of trays that are late for delivery. Maybe it's not been confirmed by the vendor, but it's not past the delivery date. Maybe it's been confirmed, but it is past the delivery date. Or maybe it has not been confirmed and it is past the delivery date. It gives you a heads up to what is going on so you're not scrambling the day of the procedure wondering where trays are. <clears throat> Again, the delivery's at risk. It gives you different options for that, different color coding for that. And then the same for the overdue pickup. Some systems will allow you to uh, customize this. Maybe trays need to be there 48 hours prior to a procedure. The loaner management system can possibly be set up that way. So you're gonna know that if they're not there prior to 48 hours, not only are you gonna be able to see that, but the vendors are going to start receiving notifications that your trays are not here, you're getting a late delivery email. If a case changes, maybe the date or time changes, the location changes, any changes that are made in your EMR, that can be brought into the loaner solution and those vendors are notified automatically of those changes. You don't have to call the vendor or the vendor doesn't drop them off and, and they find out, oh, that case was moved to the next day. They're notified ahead of time. So the communication piece of a loaner management system is extremely important and it, it's extremely smooth. Traceability. This particular slide shows you what a loaner management system could look like, showing you all of your cases coming up that require loaners. It shows you all the pertinent information, your case ID, the date and time, the procedure. It even shows you who the rep is who's assigned to that case, and it shows you the delivery date and time. So you know when those trays are supposed to be there. And one thing I want to show you is this status column right here. You see that there are different ones. There's ready for pickup, there's assembly, there's confirmed. A loaner management system that can um, do this will show when these trays are ready to be picked up. That means the vendor knows they can come pick up their trays. This one that's showing an assembly, that means that these trays associated with that case have been scanned to the assembly process. When they are scanned to a sterilizer, it would show that they are scanned to a sterilizer and that would show the status there would be sterilization. Not only would the facility, but also the vendors would know where those trays are at any given moment once they are delivered to your site. So you know, the vendor knows where they are, when they're ready to be picked up. If they're scanned to a case cart, it would show you that they're on a case cart. If one of these cases changed, maybe the date and time changed, you still finish the processing of it, but the new date and time would show up here and the vendor would be notified. Maybe that case moved to an, the next day. They know that it's gonna be longer before they have to pick them up. But the automated notification is, uh, I think is a big benefit because it takes away from someone having to be responsible for figuring out which vendor it is, contacting that vendor, making sure that they get the trays brought in, trying to figure out when they brought them in and where they are. So I talked a little bit about the vendor ratings. The vendor rating could also be customizable. You know, it might be on a 10 point scale, it might be on a five point scale, but if you 
have a vendor again that you know that you're having some challenges with, the vendor ratings will show you that, will give you that information so you have that documented. Whether it's late delivery, late pickup, or maybe there's quality issues with some of the trays that they're bringing in. In this particular slide, reported quality issues. And again, this is all customizable. So with your loaner management solution, you want to see if this is going to be part of it, where you can manage your vendor relations. You can see how many quality issues a certain vendor has had, and then that can be addressed easily. So or, the order visibility for the vendors. One nice thing about learner management systems is most of them are available on a mobile device. What we're using for most of them is a URL. It's not necessarily an application that has to be downloaded. It can be a website that they can go to and they can do their work from their mobile device. So I'm Susie Lohner and I'm sitting on the 105 and it's five o'clock and I know traffic's not moving. I can get my mobile and I can see if I have any new emails, whether it's for a new case, whether it's for a changed case. So if I have one and it's a new case, I can open that email. I can confirm that. I can add the trays that I'm going to bring in I can make any notes that might need to be, you know, put out there for the, for the facility. And when I confirm that order, it's going to show up on your schedule right away. Now, I've been sitting on the interstate in traffic doing that. So there's not any reason for the vendors to say, I didn't have time to go in and note this for you. I didn't have time to put the trays in. Another nice thing is they can not only put in the loaner trays that they're bringing into the facility, but they can also note the consignment trays that are associated with that case. So what we've talked about a little bit on here is challenges, the schedule challenge, the communication challenge, knowing where the trays are and if they've arrived and how do we know that they've been through the sterilization process. With the loaner management system in place, your schedule is much more efficient, your communication is much more efficient, and knowing that the trays have arrived and have been through your scan through your perioperative loop is much more efficient. I am hoping that going through this presentation has generated some questions for you that we can address um, here in just another minute or so. Jason, is there anything else that you would like to add to this presentation? Yeah, I feel like I've, I've kind of left you doing all the chit chatting today. So um, one of the things that we'll uh, talk about a little bit um, with the loaner management system, that's really great. And one thing that in my experience with SPD that I've run into is that vendors will just drop off trays and it'll be, you know, vendor tray one, two, three, and it doesn't actually tell me what trays they are. And the cases that the vendor, the, the trays are in aren't actually the name for what the instruments are in sometimes. So I know with a loaner management system sometimes, or what will and can happen is that you get specific names to trays listed in there so that you know which ones are actually going to be used. And then if you have a connection to a uh, tracking system, one of the great things about that is you can get those trays actually uh, in the tracking system, printed out on a, bar on a barcode label, and you'll see the actual names of the trays. They won't be handwritten anymore because you have them printed out. The OR can read what they are, and you can scan those trays to wherever they go. And that also will help with updating your loaner management system to where trays are going uh, in the process, being able to find out where stuff is. Um, you know, if they do bring it in in time, where are the trays once they've been processed and, and set up? 
you're able to see where those trays might be stored or set um, to a location. If they have a vendor storage, once they've been uh, sterilized, you can set those in there as well. So there's a lot of communication. There's so many tools and so much, um, uh, so many things available to automate and make this so much easier for everybody to do in the world of SPD. And it's tough. I've been in the world of SPD before tracking systems and technology, and now I'm in, you know fully ingrained in it. I know that it's tough to move in that direction, but it's it is there are so many tools to be able to help everybody. Um, make their jobs and their lives a little easier, and bottom line, be able to get what all of the sterile processing and the OR and vendors too is to get those patients safely uh, through surgery and recovering. Absolutely, thank you, Jason. Um, one thing to think about, you know, there are numerous loaner management solutions available out there. Um, when you do start looking make sure that you're looking for some that are going to provide the benefits that we've gone over here, different vendors, you know, of the, of the loaner solutions have different capabilities. You want to make sure that you do have the visibility that everyone has access to see that schedule, whether it's within your facility or whether it's the vendor, um, you know, make sure that your OR staff is able to have visibility to it. So everyone knows what is going on, what's coming in, what's going out, and where is it? So I want to thank you for taking the time to attend and listen to Jason and I. I believe we have some questions that we're going to be getting to shortly. So I will move this on again. I wanna thank you for attending this, and now we will go to the Q and A's. All right, wonderful. Can you both hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great, great. Thank you both. Susie and Jason, you did a wonderful job. As we prepare for the question and answer session, I'd like to quick, once again, draw your attention to that little CE icon along the bottom of your screen. Clicking on that icon will bring up a session survey. We'd love your honest feedback. Uh, we continually want to improve upon these, um, these webinars and you do have to fill it out in order to get your CE certificate. So please take some time to, to enter some thoughtful feedback, we would love it. Uh, with that, we will get right into some great questions that have come through. Um, the first of which, uh, let's see, let's do, if you have to bring a vendor tray in as a backup, do you use vendor as part of the name to distinguish when is the vendor tray and which is, to distinguish what is the vendor tray and which is the in-house tray? What are your thoughts on that? Jason? So was this, I'm sorry, was this specific to anything or just in tracking systems uh, in general? Sounds like just general best practice. Okay, so um, f from some of the uh, places that I've worked in in the past um, or worked with, uh, they will, and they have a tracking system, they can use a different colored label, um, which will d differentiate between a regular tray and a loaner tray. Um, they do have uh, things listed through the loaner label that's a little bit different than what a regular tray would have. Um, you might have listings of tray one of four, um, the doctor's name, the ore that it belongs to, you know, there's various different ways that a tracking system can identify and distinguish uh, with what is a, uh, a loaner versus what is a tray. So when you do bring in trays, uh, it just how those are entered into the system, you can have something, if there's backups that get regularly brought in, you can set it up as in the system as a backup tray. So you might have the regular tray and you might have a listing for a backup tray and you can grab the backup tray listing and use that for it so that that gives them the identification uh, and communication to the OR what tray that is. Okay, great. Um, can you use a loaner management system as a checkout application that will show the vendor has picked up their trays? I'm sorry, you were cutting out just a little bit. Could you repeat that? Sorry about that. Sure. Can you use a loaner management system as a checkout application that will show that the vendor has picked up their trays? Yes. 
you can. Um, I've worked with different facilities um, with a learner management system and some of them will have a, like a scan point that says picked up. And when the vendor comes to pick up their trays, they actually have to scan their trays to that pickup location. And then that notes in the learner management tool that they have been picked up. Okay, wonderful. Uh, SPD utilizes SenseAttract in the hospital I work for, but it's not implemented in the OR yet. Once this happens, can we use SenseAttract as our loaner management system? SenseAttract so is the... Oh, go no, go ahead, Jason. <laughs> so SenseAttract does have, and I will say SenseAttract does have a loaner management system built into um, SenseAttract itself. It is a standard module that can be utilized uh, for managing your loaners. You can set up uh, procedures in there with trays attached to them. Um, that is your, what we would call a standard loaner management system. Uh, which can be expanded into a more automated uh, system as well. So there is the uh, possibility of interfacing and being able to expand that module. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, next question, are you able to scan vendor trays to a storage location? And if so, will it pop up as vendor tray one, vendor tray two, et cetera, or will it pop up with the actual tray name? So there are different um, systems out there. Um, the ones that I've worked with, uh, to be very specific, um, you can input your trays however you would like them to be. Um, most sterile processing areas that I've worked with want them to be very specific, as well as being able to give the OR the visibility of what they're looking at, because when trays are wrapped or put in a container, they, you can no longer tell what they are, so you need to have definitive labeling on the outside to tell you what uh, what's inside. Uh, that way we have you know none of the unnecessary opening of uh, sterile trays that you've worked so hard to make sure that they're ready for. Um, so you can put vendor one, vendor two, but that really wouldn't uh, work too well for communication. So when you're putting your uh, loaners into the system, you would uh, set them with the names of the actual trays and they will print out on the label for you to be able to identify. And yes, they can be uh, scanned, sorry, the initial part to a storage location and you will be able to uh, track what has been scanned to that. Great. Uh, next question, is the loaner management system for SenseAttract able to be used at a VA facility due to their strict policies and federated logins? Absolutely. It okay. absolutely can be used at the VAs. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, what is the best practice in your, in both of your opinions, um, to get vendor compliance? Not a loaded question at all. <laughs> <laughs> a, a big stick, uh, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> In, with my experience, you know, when I initially am talking to customers um, about a loaner management system, that is a big thing that comes up is the vendor compliance and the vendor buy-in. And once we have gone through the process and we're on site ready to do the training, once the vendors see how it works and how much visibility they have and how really how easy it is to use, we don't get much, much pushback. You know, you're always going to have those that are gonna go, I just don't have time to do it. Well, remember in the presentation, I told you I was sitting on the interstate and I went ahead and took care of, of an order I needed to take care of. So, you know, it really doesn't take that much time to do that. So a, a lot of it's in how it's presented to the vendors. Um, we, we try to present it that, you know, it is going to make their life easier because they're going to know exactly where their trays are. They're going to know when they need to be picked up. Um, and they have a history yep. of what they've done. And I agree with uh, Susie uh, wholeheartedly. It's trying uh, to show what the value, as uh, Susie showed in the slide there, what is the value of using a system like this to the vendor? 
um, that vendor gets paid by having those trays ready by going into a, you know, um, into an OR and being utilized. That vendor, you know, wants to have a, a relationship with that surgeon. So if the better uh, relationship he has, the better it works out for him. In the long run, like I said, patients are who we're trying to take care of. So if we can get these uh, these trays in in a timely manner um, and, you know, done efficiently and done well, then patient outcomes are better. Um, so it's just showing the value, the ease, um, what the value that comes out of using a loaner management system as compared to a piece of paper that somebody scribbled on and then it got wet and then nobody can read what, what's going on. Um, it's just it, the ease of it is so much, the, the amount that they have to do is so much less than what their value is going to come out of it. So just trying to show that value. And usually there's a few aha moments. They're like, oh, wow, that's great. I get those with sterile processing with different aspects of, you know, uh, uh, of, um, of pieces in the process too, but we get those with the vendors sometimes as well. Great. Can the vendor rating portion also be used to monitor physician compliance? For physician compliance, um, I guess I would want to know a little bit more about what physician compliance means, um, where you're looking at for that, if it's relating to notifying the vendors you know, enough in advance to have trays at the facility on time. That would be something that, uh, you know, we would want to check into to see if that's something that we could do or, you know, what loaner solutions might be available for that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this question, again, specific to the VA, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but I'm going to let you answer that. Is the loaner link software available for the VA systems? LonerLink is not a piece of software. LonerLink is a cloud-based application. It is a URL that you go to, and yes, it is available to the VA. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you for that clarification. Um, this is a, a great question. What are some tips to show my boss that we need loaner management systems? Is it data? Sometimes if I feel like numbers aren't enough to tip the decision. Hmm. How much time are you spending, you know, think about how much time you're spending looking for the trays, wondering if the trays are in, when do they come in? Are they, you know, with maybe with timing, how much time is spent in SPD? because you have to rush to get trace process because they were delivered late. Um, I don't know, Jason, can you, can you help out with this one a little bit? Sorry, I saw another question that I was kind of peeking at and I got an answer from somebody about uh, another question. So I, I apologize, what was the, what was the question again? No problem. It's the question is, what are some tips to show my boss that we need a loaner management system? Is it data? Sometimes I feel like numbers aren't enough to tip the decision. So um, depending upon what you have available to you uh, to have the, uh, so if you're working with straight paper and reporting in that respect, then that can be difficult unless you have a pretty good uh, loaner book. Um, to be able to show, hey, you know, um, we got all these trays in, Thursday nights are super heavy, you know, we would really like to be able to uh, give us the um, the uh, best tools possible. Um, lost trays, sometimes loaners will get put together and they get set on a cart, they get pushed somewhere else, um, you know, maybe if they had the ability to, to uh, scan it or to be able to determine where that's at um, and there's some uh, as Susie mentioned earlier in the thing some delays in cases uh, that's absolutely the last thing any boss wants to hear especially in sterile processing is that 
because of something that happened in the in the department, you know, cases were delayed or had to be pushed back or had to be canceled altogether, which I've, I've experienced myself, and that can be a horrible situation. So um, relating uh, real stuff, you know, if numbers don't work, just knowing that um, that we're trying to, to, to make this better and relate, you know, hey, we had a couple last month, we had a few cases delayed and a case canceled, or, you know, we had these trades come in late and we were, you know, scrambling to do this. Uh, numbers and relating situations uh, hopefully will help you in that respect. Great. Um, sometimes I feel like loaner management is more like vendor management. Will a loaner management system help improve my vendor relationships? And if I don't have a system right now, are there ways I can improve my system right now? Yes, it can help with vendor relationship and it can help with vendor management. <clears throat> Vendors are held accountable, yes. <clears throat> but when they realize how their accountability is being measured and how, um, say for instance, LonerLink works with their, you know, if their deliveries are late or if their pickup is late, you're able to work with them in that so they can understand, you know, why why it's such an issue for you when those trays are late. And with the vendor rating system, that helps show you that. Now, without a loaner management system, um, unless you, you know, it's hard when you don't have that documentation to be able to, you know, talk to someone about a bad habit they may have of constantly being late with deliveries or something like that. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not real sure how to answer it as far as when you don't have a loaner management system. Okay. Uh, next question, should I dedicate one person to managing my loaners? I don't have enough full-time employees as is, but our loaners and vendors are out of control. <laughs> well, at first, um, I would say, do you have a loaner management system? Um, I would think not with, with that question. You know, it's uh, different facilities that I've worked with. Again, some have um, like a, you know, a SPD analyst that works with their tracking system and works with loaner link. You know, that's what their focus is, is to keep everything maintained, watch the, the vendor ratings, you know, and but another thing with, like with LunarLink, the, the vendor ratings, it can be set up to where if a vendor falls to three or two ratings, you know, information can be sent out to maybe there's a vendor compliance area or to an OR manager or something like that, that there is a vendor who is notoriously not doing what they're supposed to do. Yes. Sometimes what I've seen is if you're able to, if you don't have a loaner management system, and even if you do, but you still have issues with, um, you know, the vendors being out of control, um, sometimes you can sow some of the relationships you have uh, with the OR. A lot of SPDs work very closely with them. Some have a less than desirable relationship. But if there is somebody that you have worked with, um, in the OR, maybe a surgeon, maybe a nurse manager or somebody who could maybe champion a little bit and be able to um, have that communication. I know it, it's difficult. It's going to be, it seems like it should be more work on somebody else's part than yours because you're trying to support and, and take care of the things that are being given to you um, to maybe get a champion in one of these areas that can work with you. Um, I've worked in different developments where you, you, you uh, establish the data, you, you compile the data, you put it together in, in some kind of a presentation um, where you're able to maybe with this champion go, you know, and, and have this hard conversation to see if you can have better conversation with the vendors. Um, there are some great vendors out there. I've worked with some really good ones over the years that really are, you know, on top of their game and make sure that they're getting stuff done, but you're going to have some of those that are not. 
So it's how do you weed some of those out? Because they're really working to your facility based on your facility, letting them in. So if you have some bad vendors and you're able to have a, if you do have a loaner management, that's where the ratings come in. Because those bad vendors either are going to straighten up or they're going to be rated out. And then, believe me, all these companies got more than enough vendors they can rotate through it, that I've dealt with. So it's just, a, it, it's going to take some work on, you know, your department's part to try to make it better. And I know, especially in these times that we're working in now, that's a very difficult thing to do, but it's definitely possible. Okay. I am curious, along with this question submission, uh, who you think should be responsible for the checkout portion of loaner management? Is it sterile processing or is it the vendor? <laughs> That's a good question, and we come up with both. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, some facilities, again, that I have uh, implemented Lona Link in, the vendors are responsible for doing the check-in. Other sites, SPD is. It kind of depends on what the facility thinks works best for them. Um, you know, staffing for SPD, I know is it a is it a premium because everybody's short staffed, you know. So is it something that you can work with your vendors to do? Uh, have a, a generic login for the vendors where they can go ahead and check their trays in. They don't have to type anything. Any you know if they have a loaner management system, that information would automatically populate. So they don't have to type all the tray names in. They don't have to type the procedure name in. It's already there for them. Um, so it's it's even difficult for me to say for best practices because I've seen both. Okay. Jason, anything to add? No, nope. I mean, that's pretty much along the same lines as the areas I've seen. Uh, you know, it's just, and it also depends. There, I will say there is one thing that you run into is if it's not an actual vendor, that's delivering the trays. If you're a facility where the vendors use a, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, a delivery service. So they basically pick up and they drop off. They're not the ones who are really working for the company and associated with it. If that is something you deal with, then unfortunately that would be SPD will have to do the check-in. Um, but I do think it can be a 50-50 deal relationship. If the person's available to do it, then they can do it. If SPD can do it, they can do it. Um, it's really once you've had a management system in place, if you integrate with uh, some automated software, that a lot of that can be done on the front end before, and that limits the amount that sterile processing would have to do. Great. Uh, this next question is, if I use Sensatrack as my loaner management s system, is Sensatrack capable of being used remotely by all parties, including schedulers, managers, and vendors? Um, second part to that question is, is there an additional cost, and is there a Sensatrack app available? So they... Um... If they have SenseTrack, it does depend upon how they've set up. A majority of our uh, SenseTrack clients, um, users are on a cloud. Uh, so there is the accessibility if you have the login to be able to go in through, you know, usually it's Internet Explorer that supports it very well. Um, you do have, you know, whatever your access level is in SenseTrack, you would have that ability to be able to see um, on your you know, mostly on your laptop, um, there is uh, an app available, uh, but it is on that you can use on your phones. But it's generally limited to um, scanning capabilities, not necessarily information um, uh, like looking at your trays and stuff like that. So the capability on your your home computer remotely um, is there if you are a hardwired network that has an on-prem server. Um, then there is uh, that access is given by the the uh, hospital networking team themselves, um, and is a lot harder to be able to access. And and one other thing you would want to think about because you mentioned vendors, um, you know, do you want your vendors to have access to your Sensatrack? 
Uh, yes, it can be limited to what they can see and what they can do, but that is something to think about too, is how much access you want them to have. Okay, wonderful. Um, can you do a loaner search with the vendor name or census name? If so, how? Are you referring to, uh, are we referring to a tray, like a loaner tray? Could you read it again, please? Yeah. Um, can you do a loaner search with the vendor name or census name? And if so, how? Within the loaner management system, yes, you can uh, sort by vendors, you can sort by trays. Um, you can look that way within Sensatrack. You can certainly um, search by a tray. I'm okay. not real sure what the, you know, if that's what the question was relating to, if it's relating to a tray or if it's relating to vendors that bring trays in. Um, okay. But yes, there are searchable fields. Wonderful. And if there is a follow-up question from the person who answered, asked that question, feel free to submit and we'll, we'll get to it for sure. Uh, the next question is, is there a way to get the census loaner module to turn over trays for a new date without checking out and checking back in that can still track the total amount of trays in the reports? I'm happy to repeat it if you'd like. I see Jason's thinking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to. So I'm thinking it's along the lines of if that case was checked in and then they're doing the same case another day, um, rather that they can flip it over or they didn't do the case that day and they're going to do the case another day. Um, there is the ability to make date changes, you know, update the date and time of the surgery um, in it uh, without having to check out and check in or, you know, check it in. Um, but it's just kind of not really sure which way we're looking as far as, you know, the turnover part. All right, next question. How can I keep track of my vendors who do not pick up trays on time? I have trays that have been sitting here for weeks and can't get a hold of the vendor or they just don't come when they say they will. With a loaner management system, you would have that information at your fingertips through the um, vendor ratings. Um, without a loaner management system, it's difficult to force them to pick them up. Um, you know, we, we can call, we can email, we can contact their manager, we can talk that contact, you know, the local company or the local rep. Um, but that, that is a difficult piece of it. I don't have a perfect answer for that. Um, I know that is a big, a big issue with sites that I work with when we're first talk, talking about our learner management system is how do I get the vendors to pick up their trays? Um, you I've know, short some, of threatening I've to... Extreme, yeah, I've seen some extreme methods to this. Usually you're trying yes. to be a little bit on the, the, the nice side of it and work, work well, but I have actually worked with some uh, or, uh, SPD managers that have put their foot down and said, we're not a storage facility. If you don't come in and get your trays within a certain amount of time, they'll be on the dock. And whether you get them or somebody else does, that'll be up to you. So there's there, and th there's some good and bad there, but some of them have been successful with it. And it's basically like, hey, we're not going to put up with it anymore. But that all depends upon your relationships and your facility. Of course, you don't want to have to go to that extreme. But space is you know we talk about the or minutes and how much that costs space is just as much gold in a premium in any facility no matter how large you are you give yourself a bigger space in a house i guarantee you're going to fill it up same thing happens in a hospital so we have you have to be able to manage your space and hold what needs to be held okay wonderful um, this next question says, sometimes we have back-to-back -back instances of the same procedure. Can the vendor just keep the sets at the hospital and assign the same trays to multiple cases? Yes. 
they can. There would still be some steps that they would need to go through um, within the loaner management solution. But yes, they don't have to pick them up and bring them back. Um, we would, you know, we would talk through that process if need be, but it is, yes, they can do that. Okay, a couple uh, questions specific to vendors and loaner link. The first one is when vendors use the loaner link, do they need their own login when using federated logins? Yes, the vendors, um, loaner link itself is set up, each user will create their, um, their account based on their email. And with the vendors, it is not set up for them until a case is associated with them. And then that generates it to where they can request to have their account set up. Um, so it would be a login that they, they decided to use. Okay. And now, with question. that being said, you know, if, if it requires something different, that's something we would obviously discuss. Second question related to that topic, how many vendors are using and putting data into the loaner link and is there a limit? No limit. We have, I, I don't know, 25 sites, I think, utilizing loaner link right now. Uh, keep in mind, loaner link itself is a cloud-based software as a service application. So there is no limit. What is your recommendation for getting the count sheets into Sensatrack for loaners? Say that again. Um, the count oh. sheets for loaners. Um, that kind of varies from facility to facility, whether they want to have a count sheet in there. Um, there is uh, the capability with technology to utilize uh, cameras uh, to take care, take pictures. Um, of the trays when they come in so that they have accountability for what's in there. I know um, there's a lot of that discussion that has to do with loaners brought in, instruments are in there, loaner, the vendor comes to pick it up, I'm missing a piece, I need to charge you $5,000. Um, so I know some places have used count sheets in order to uh, do that. Not a lot of places can. This is pretty rare actually in some of my experiences. Uh, due to the fact that they don't have, they have enough trays they got to go through without, you know, so they use pictures uh, to help with that uh, and visually see what's in there. Okay, great. And we have time, there are so many great questions that came through and we have time for one more question. The others that we haven't gotten to will be uh, answered directly via email, but we'll end on this question. Does this system help with mm -hmm. claims? Yes. Is, is there one thing I could say before we get to that last question? Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, what I would like to say for anyone who is um, on this webinar, if you do have more questions uh, regarding Loaner Link itself, please reach out to your contact or click on the learn more on here and it will give you more detail. Um, we just, you know, we just don't have the time to go into a lot of detail here. So if you are, um, if it's something, you know, you want more information on, just please click on the learn more or reach out to your um, census contact. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so this final question, does the system help with claims of missing instrumentation from loaner trays? Sorry, it broke up a little bit on my end. Sure, I can repeat it. Does this system help with claims of missing instrumentation from loaner trays? Yep, and that's part of what I had mentioned earlier is um, with the, the camera and taking pictures of the trays that come in, it, it can be a little bit cumbersome to start with, but once you get your uh, your process down, just like any process, bringing anything in, whether it be tracking sister loan and management, you know, that, heck, you create new trays, it takes time. Um, but a, I have seen that work very well for, and I've gotten a lot of good feedback that um, using cameras, taking pictures of the, the loaners as they come in um, will help in that you have, you know, data right there to show that 
this is what came in, so it, it did not go missing if it wasn't in there already. All right, wonderful. Well, I want to make sure that everyone who is still tuned in takes advantage of the downloadable resources. Those are free tools for you and your colleagues to use. Uh, in about an hour, you're going to receive an email that will have a link to this session on demand along with the link to download your CE certificate. You can watch the session again, you can reference it, you can share it with your colleagues. Um, I also wanna point out there's a pink call to action button um, on the bottom of your screen. You can click on that and register for the next webinar in this series about dirty data. That one's going to take place on August 13th. On behalf of Beyond Clean and in partnership with Census Technologies, we thank you for joining us today. And as always, we encourage you to keep fighting dirty. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.